Good afternoon. This is John again. This is part two of Used Book Hall, Thrift Stores, Book Nook. And I think that's where I got these books. It is now 2.05 in the afternoon here on a Wednesday here in West Michigan. It's sunny. It's really a nice day. I'm down the lower level. Got the list of the books. And uh, I put away the ones I just showed you a minute ago in that part one video. Most of the books I get all go in, in the, I have an, like I have an Anthony Burgess collection. I have a, a James Baldwin. I collect historians, American historians. I showed you those. And I collect uh, the vintage contemporary books. And so basically everything just goes into an area down here in the lower level. So I'm going to show you the books. I got this from the Book Nook. This is the Moby Dick. <laughs> now, I in the past I've showed I had a huge Moby Dick collection, uh, all different editions, different covers, and I got rid of most of them when I dehauled last summer. But I like this edition because of the illustrations. This is a Moby Dick or the Whale by Herman Melville, an Aaron Press edition as designed by Andrew. Poem with illustrations by Barry Mosier. I like the illustrations in it. That's why I bought this. Yeah, you can get it online. They're not expensive, but I really like the the woodcuts in this Moby Dick edition, and so I grabbed it. And then I found this novel, at Bibles to Mexico. I kept looking at it over the last couple of weeks. It's called All Over Creation by Ruth Joseca. Joseka, anyway, she's a Japanese Buddhist monk, but she writes novels, which I find author of the award-winning novel My, My Year of Meats, worked for more than a decade in television and film. Her documentary and dramatic films have been shown in PBS at the Sundance Festival at colleges and universities across the... Well, I thought she said that she was a Buddhist monk, but maybe I'm wrong. Unless this is Unless I read something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it looked interesting, and so I grabbed it at Bibles to Mexico for 50 cents. I don't know where I got that. She was a Buddhist monk. I don't know where I got that. Anyway, I got this at Goodwill, How to Read Impressionism. It's art, art, How to Read Impressionism, A Ways of Looking by James R. Rubin. It's just looking at impressionistic paintings and how you read them. Uh, and I, you know, I'm into impressionism, and I just like all the paintings and the illustrations. And it was only 80 cents, so I picked it up. This I never heard. Well, yeah, I I have two novels by D. M. Thomas. Now I might have dehauled them, but he wrote a novel called The White Hotel, and the. Uh, pictures at an exposition. I I used to have them. I might not. But this is his novel, Eating at Pavalia. Pavela. It's a novel. Uh, the last novel from the celebrated author of the White Hotel is an uh, enthralling recreation, recreation of same Sigmund Freud's last days. That's what grabbed me. Anything about Sigmund Freud, Vienna, time of Sigmund Freud, uh, it is 1939, the man in London waiting to die, protected from the worst pain of cancer by regular injections of morphine, has had an almost inca incalculable effect, some would say for the worse, upon modern times. With wit and skill, Thomas probes Freud's conscious and unconscious worlds as the dying psychoanalysis retells his life story to his daughter, Anna. I, it just struck me, so I grabbed it. This is a biography on Montaigne, a biography we all know about his essays. I was going to show his essays, but you know I have them. I bought them years ago. They came into the book nook, a three-volume set of his essays, and I grabbed them. And uh, so this is a biography that came into the book nook. This is the letters of Flannery O'Connor. I had this already. This is the, my edition was all beat up. 
So I took that back to the book nook, and I this is the one that uh, that came into the book nook. I had one, an older, and beat up one, but so this is the letters of Flannery Connor, uh, the habit of being selected and edited by Sally Fitzgerald. This is uh, autobiography. Flora Thompson, Lark Rise to Candleford. It's interesting, a booktuber last week or two weeks ago showed this book, and I didn't know anybody was familiar with it. I had never heard of it. It came into the book nook. And uh, it's kind of autobiography of village life in England in the 19th century, maybe a Victorian period or Edwardian. This is an, I just showed you Karen Armstrong's Short History of Islam. This is another book that I came into the book nook, The Lost Art of Scripture, Rescuing the Sacred Text by Karen Armstrong. Uh, she wrote the book, A History of God. I have a, I had a bunch of her books and I dehauled them, but now I find myself collecting them. I don't agree with her, but I just, you know, sometimes you get a book just to argue with somebody with. I argue with her. I think she's, completely wrong about the Bible. This is the new novel by Omar Toms, Tomsey's Lincoln Highway. I, uh, he wrote The Gentleman in Moscow and he also wrote one called, I have both those in the back room, Rules of Civility and he wrote The Gentleman in Moscow. This is his newest one. Came into the book nook, Lincoln Highway. I started reading it and I might get back into it in the future. This came to the book nook. I collect the writings of Michael C Cunningham. He wrote At the Home of the End of the World. He wrote all kinds of novels and uh, this is his novel. This I think is one of his first novels, Flesh and Blood by Michael Cunningham. This is a novel by C Cavino, Byron in the Trees, historical novel. I had this already in paperback. The Kool-Aid colored tangerine flake streamlined baby by Tom Wolfe. I just like this old edition when he was really young. He died recently. These are like journalistic essays. And uh, I like his writings. So I just grabbed it. I got this at Goodwill yesterday, The Collector's Book of Science Fiction by H.G. Wells. It has his classic in here, uh, The First Man in the Moon, Empire of the Ants. Uh, it's just his science fiction. I like the, I like the illustrations in it. They're kind of old-fashioned. Uh, so I grabbed it. It was only like 80 cents. So I just grabbed it. I'm not really into science fiction, but I like H.G. Wells. I have his History of the, of the World in five volumes. This is another sci-fi. Somebody mentioned this science fiction writer, Hal Clement, and... There was one at the Goodwill yesterday, and I picked it up. I'm just curious. Nitron Fix by Hell Clement. I don't know. It looked really easy to read. Very small. If I could read it in a day, so maybe I'll read it someday. I'm just kind of curious why she raved about him. I never. I'm not like I'm not into sci-fi, but I was just kind of curious. I got this at the Book Nook Home Reading Service by Fabio Morabento. This is translated out of Spanish by Curtis Boyer. I start reading this too at the Book Nook and I was really enjoying reading it so I might get back into it. I, correct, I collect Rodney Dole. He's an Irish writer. This is his trilogy. Uh, the Barrytown Trilogy. I have some of these in hardback, but I didn't have the commitments 
or the van. I had the snapper. I have a big stack of his books. So I just show him to you how many he's written. These are all Rodney Dole's <laughs> novels. There's just a ton of them. So I collect him, Rodney Dahl. Just goes on, the woman who walked into a door by Rodney Dahl, the snapper by Rodney Dahl, smile by Rodney Dahl, uh, Patty Clark, ha 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 by Patty, Rodney Dahl, love by Rodney Dahl, just goes on and on. He's written a lot of novels. Uh, stories, bullfighting by Rodney, Rod, Rodney Dull, Paula Spencer by Rodney Dull, Star Called Henry, it just goes on and on. So I picked another one of those up of his trilogy, the Berrytown Trilogy. So I haven't really read him yet, but I do plan to. Then I picked up this modernist classic, Ghost Town, by Robert Coover. Poetry by Carlos, William Carlos Williams Patterson. I had this already, but this is I like this edition of it, so I, I grabbed it. Another modernist classic by Donald Barthenemieu, Snow White. This is a real fine, this is really a gem. I'm glad I found this. This is a, a New Zealand writer I never heard of. Her name is Janet Frame, daughter of Buffalo. And then I found the literary criticism of Joyce Carol Oates, Uncensored Views and Reviews. I found this at Action House. It's in perfect condition. And as you know, I collect everything by Joyce Carol Oates. I have everything that there is. But I don't have much of her nonfiction. So I was really pleased to find this. Perfect condition, deckled edge. This came out in 2005. So I was pleased to find this. So that's what I found at the book nook, the thrift stores, and now I can put these away. I'm downloading the first part one of this video. Not much else to talk about. So I hope you had a good August, you have a good September. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. It's like one thing making videos you you become aware of of who you are <laughs> kind of self knowledge self self discovery and uh my wife says i'm a perfectionist and but how i've learned to deal with my perfectionist tendencies is to accept the fact that everything is just messed up <laughs> and that includes me i mean you have to come to a place that you realize hey i'm not perfect I want to be, to me, it'd be, if I wish I could present beauty, I wish my videos were just beautiful, just, you know, works of art, perfection, just manifested. But what you get is somebody or something that is a mess. <laughs> and, but I'm here because I love books. You can see that. Look behind me. I have 15,000 books <laughs> in this house. I, we might have more. My wife has a room full of books. I have books all over the house. But I'm sure, and I have cataloged almost 14,000 books in library thing. And I know that my wife has a couple of thousand. And I know that I have books I haven't even cataloged. I, don't even, I haven't really even cataloged my Christian books. I started cataloging books just... Oh, just when I started getting used books at thrift stores. So I never have really cataloged my Christian library, just very little of it. Mainly I've been, I just started 
collecting books and then I would put them in library thing. And when I would get used books at thrift stores or used book sales or something or the book nook. But I really haven't cataloged my Christian library or books I had before I start collecting used books. 95% of the books that you see in this lower level are used thrift store books, going to used book sales, the book nook, library, friends of library book sales. They're not new books. I can't afford new books. You know, we live on, an, we live on social security. I do have some investments from when I, uh, when I was working, I saved some money up, but I don't buy that many new books. If I do buy a new book, I try to get it on discount, pre-order it, get some kind of deal. Or I try to find it used in Amazon. But uh, it's amazing what you find. I mean, I mean, I found this at Action House for you know a dollar. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on. This was a dollar fifty at the Book Nook. This was three dollars at the book nook. This was a dollar fifty. This was two dollars. This was a dollar fifty. This was a quarter. This was eighty cents. See, it just goes on and on. You can find anything. Snow White. This was uh, eighty cents. This is a classic. When this was sold for thirteen dollars <laughs> at one time, I got it for eighty cents. This is another postmodernist classic, Ghost Town, Robert Coover. This went for, this was sold for I don't know, probably thirteen dollars. I got it for, uh, I think, a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty. This. Uh, 80 cents. Just goes on and on. It's amazing what you find at thrift stores or used book sales or library, friends of library sales or I don't know. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to read. I was, I've been reading a lot of uh, this today. George Snyder, unwritten books, writing in my diary, watching the birds. I'm going to go outside and take some pictures out of my flower garden. My flower garden's almost at the end. And I, it's been, flowers have been coming. I, I was out there, been weeding the last couple of weeks and letting other flowers come up. So I got to take some pictures this afternoon. Now tomorrow is August, the, no, tomorrow September the 1st, there's Labor Day. So next Monday, there's no book nook. So that'd be kind of nice. Uh, our son, Caleb, and his wife and her children are going up north. So we got to keep care of their dog, Ollie while they're gone. So that's, I, we, we like having Ollie around. We had two dogs over the, the years. We had a dog named Mac who was a, a West Highland Terrier. And then when after, after Mac, uh, Macintosh died, we had Rudy. You've seen videos of Rudy. He died in 2016. He had cancer and he died. But we haven't had a dog since, and uh, but we look at Ollie as our little grandson. <laughs> he's a little dog, but he's no, he's really a good dog. So we'll have him while our son is gone, our oldest son is gone with his family over the Labor Day weekend. So anyway, I'm just rambling. Have a good Labor Day. Have a good weekend. Have a good September. I don't know when I'll make a video again. I'm just rambling. I've been rambling a lot. I don't know. I can't figure out why I'm always rambling. But I thank you for your comments. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, bye.